Before we launch into this episode, we have a quick message from our guest today. Tanim is the co-founder of Golden Touch Academy, and they're offering their Money Mastery program in September. You'll hear about it in the episode as well. Uh, the dates are Saturday 10th, Sunday 11th, and Saturday 17th and 18th of September. It's all online. It's loads of value, and it's really something to change your mindset. Uh, the guest talks about it during the episode as well, so have a listen, and if you're interested, register and get your tickets ASAP. We've put a link in the show notes if you use our link uh, not only do you get a huge discount, but you're also able to support our podcast project. Thank you very much. Enjoy the episode. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Middle West Podcast. You are joined by myself. Yes, I am actually hosting. I actually am properly hosting because uh, Thaqib is usually trying to hog the mic. This, and this is unacceptable. Just <laughs> character assassination. But uh, anywho, anywho, come on Thaqib, let me carry on. Let me kind of, let me get, let me get into the flow of things. Uh, so yeah, I'm joined by my co-host Thaqib. Assalamu alaikum. And Hamda. Alaikum alaikum. Who has joined us from uh, from Birmingham? Uh, we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to relieve her of her pain, and uh, <laughs> and we are joined by. Very, it's a good city. I don't understand why you're coming for Birmingham. Uh, come on, we all know why. Come on, there's only one group of people who ever like Birmingham, and that's one reason. That's it. Uh, <laughs> We're joined, inshallah, by actually uh, an esteemed guest, uh, a guest who, uh, mashallah, uh, needs no introduction, actually, or maybe he does. Uh, uh, we have with us uh, Brother Tanim, inshallah, someone who actually I have uh, been following for, for, for a while as well, uh, ever since my uh, university days, uh, you know, during my days as, uh, as, uh, as FOSIS chair, I was engaging with uh, LSE ISOC quite a bit, and uh, Everyone from LSE Isaac was always talking about this person called Tanim the Great. So, uh, welcome, welcome to our podcast. The Great Dictator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Jazakallah khair. And uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, why don't you just kind of, uh, you know, go in and tell us a bit about yourself and... Uh... Um, yeah, sure. Um, I, as you mentioned, I uh, studied at LSE and I was heavily involved there with the Islamic Society a bit too heavily, which led me to fail a few exams uh, as, some, uh, as it happens sometimes when you're not able to balance things out. But Alhamdulillah, it gave me a chance to spend more time at uni and explore uh, various things. And that's kind of when I started thinking about um, careers, life, long-term business, freedom. And I, got, I started seeing uh, people at my, uh, sort of my peers who obviously were a few years ahead of me because I took a gap year and I failed a couple of exams, uh, sort of disappearing into the city. Very active people, very inspiring people, they just go and disappear and they get stuck for the next 30, 40, 50 years. And then I, I thought to myself, am I heading in the same direction? And sort of that's when I decided to try to play it differently. So I uh, took a gap year where I decided to do a little bit of traveling, learn some Arabic, and try to start a business. And where, where, uh, did, you, where did you travel to? Uh, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, China, and Thailand. It oh, was wow. actually, I was invited for a wedding uh, from a friend from LSE in Malaysia, and then we just basically went around a little bit on a very limited student budget. <laughs> very nice. You made the most of it. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Allah provided. There's a really interesting story about that where I had not, I didn't have enough money actually to, um, for spending money. I just never had enough for my ticket. And then subhanAllah, three days before the flight, I get a check in the post and it was a refund from uh, the student loans company because I never took any loans with them. And I don't wow. know. <laughs> so Allah, the, Allah and, and they still took some money from you. <laughs> money from you, can you believe it? They were like sneakily taking it out of your account. SubhanAllah. So yeah, it is, uh, and that's when it's literally like a check through the post, divine intervention to allow me to uh, <laughs> be able to eat while I'm abroad. Um, but yeah, so five years on, I'm still on that gap year. Uh, meaning that Alhamdulillah, I, I haven't had to go back to like a corporate career. And uh, the first three years were very, very difficult. And uh, recent times, Alhamdulillah, I've got a little bit more stability. Uh, had lots of uh, growth and mentorship and alhamdulillah recently started my small little family and I'm now on a mission now on a mission inshallah to 
free up more talented Muslims from the shackles of the corporate world. So, I, th- I mean, when you talk about the shackles of the corporate world, so I think we're kind of conditioned into this, you know, you get a big school. I mean, you had a big name degree. You're set for corporate That's success. Well, from, from when I was about this big, my dream was to become an investment banker and to go to LSE. Uh, in yeah. secondary school, I was dreaming and aiming for these things, right? And it's, like you said, it's programmed into us. From a so very young age. How, how did everyone around you take it? Like, uh, especially like your family, your parents, were they like, what the hell is going on? This gap year has gone on for long enough. I'm incredibly disappointed because um, while I was at, before uni, alhamdulillah, I was accepted onto a program with Deloitte. So even before uni, I'm on my way to, you know, the financial sector of London. Um, I mean, I've got a job in the city. And then throughout uni, I did lots of internships. I worked in banking. I worked in tech. Um, alhamdulillah, I got some good experience and obviously everybody expects you to then go on and uh, join that industry and, you know, get the 40, 50k salary. And when that didn't happen, and instead of that, I was sitting at home on my laptop working on this business that wasn't making any money. Everybody thought I lost my marbles. And, so, and, and the, 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 biggest disappointed, well, this, the, the, the biggest disappointment for me was disappointing my mom who for a long time has worked, made lots of sacrifices. And the dream has always been for her to finally retire and not need to work anymore. But here I am where I should be working and earning 50K. I'm here trying to do this entrepreneurship thing. So that was very difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think is, uh, I mean, obviously you took a pay cut temporarily. Um, do you think you're ever going to make that much money that you could have if you continued down that corporate trajectory? You think you'll ever make up that? financial hit that you took um in corporate as an employee i mean i think generally right so we i mean in our podcast we have like we have one of the guys i'm gonna shift some uh, a, a paradigm here as an employee okay. you'll make what 50 100k a year in business you can make that in a month yeah so that is the difference and that's why i think we're in the completely wrong game imagine putting the effort study and sacrifice that we do in education and careers. Imagine putting that in business under someone's mentorship. We okay. Be going a lot, lot further. So, so th- this is this is kind of your. I mean, if you look at your big billionaires, you're not going to make a billion dollars working a corporate job. You're never going to make a billion dollars. Um, but is it, is it kind of because I guess there's two things, right? For a lot of people who they're going to business, they're like, look, the corporate sellout world, the corporate slavery world. That's not my motivation. I don't really care about money and that type of stability, I want to go and actually do something different. But actually what you're saying is it's fine to be motivated by money, but you can make more money this way. Is, is that kind of your... The way, I see, the way I see it, business is actually not uh, only a, a perfect platform to make an impact in the world at scale, more than you can in, in employment. And it's also the, the ideal uh, you know, vehicle to allow you to have flexibility in your life and it allows you to uh, amass wealth because you're breaking the relationship between time and money so you in, you're no longer selling your time for money and the moment you break that relationship the sky's the limit and of course i'm not trying to uh, sell a pipe uh, you know a pipeline dream here that everyone's going to become a millionaire if they start a business but i would rather make forty thousand a year working three hours a day on my business that I'm truly passionate about, then make 60,000 in a job where I am completely depressed, completely disengaged and completely, uh, and my potential is limited in, in that. Uh, and I would have to do that for a very, very, very long time. The thing is, going back to your days, you know, when you were uh, a student, when you were, or, you know, when you're kind of retaking a lot of your exams and uh, mm-hmm. You had your fellow peers who had kind of, as you mentioned, you know, they washed their way into the, the corporate uh, cycle, I guess. Uh, what was like the main drive that you, you that, that kind of, you know, you thought to yourself, okay, no, um, I want to be working towards financial freedom. I want to be working towards doing whatever I want. What was like the main drive that said, you know, I want my life to be more about just working. So what, what kind of pushed it, you? It, it comes, uh, I think you, you all will relate to that. And is that, you know, we as active young Muslims who are trying to do something positive, are trying to make a contribution, you don't want that contribution to finish after graduation. 
And after graduation, you know, when you go into these really amazing jobs, and alhamdulillah, there's nothing wrong with having a job. It just depends what you want out of life. Mm -hmm. um, when you go into these jobs, your opportunity to contribute uh, 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 it becomes very, very limited. And if you, on top of that, you lay a family and all these other responsibilities that we have growing up, it becomes very difficult. And I can understand why people disappear from the activism scene uh, after they get that amazing job, right? And, uh, and guess what they're doing uh, when they're at work? They're dreaming about being able to leave and do the activism full time. So now business allows you to do one of two things. Either be able to earn enough with working um, almost part time, so then you can focus the rest of your time on the activism and on the contribution, legacy, mission, whatever you want to call that. So it can free up that time for you to go and do that. Mm -hmm. Or you can do that full time and just figure out a way to um, and pay your bills, which is what I'm doing with the Golden Touch Academy. It is my mission, it is my goal to help Muslims with financial freedom, with financial literacy, uh, with coaching and mentoring and helping them achieve their potential. Now, I could choose to do that as a charity, which means that I still need to work somewhere to pay my bills, or I can figure out a way for this to uh, become a commercial, which means that I can not only just focus my full self onto this for the rest of my life, but also build on it and increase the work that we do and build a team and an organization around it. So that's the power of business uh, for me. And in our community, business has certain connotations. It's risky, you have to be dodgy, you, it's difficult to be honest and all of these things. But truth is business is the most amazing thing. You know, is it, is it, you know I wonder you know, um, how many of the big figure, the big scholars, the big giants of our history, the Sahaba, the prophets, how many of them were employees? Mm. Maybe something that I guess, I mean, you I guess said it... something really cool there, like about risks. Like, I for me, I find it risky going into something where it may not pay off in terms of financially, anyway. So, what would you say to people who are in that sort of tippy thing where they're like, do I jump in with all like both feet, or do I sort of take take a step back and just be an employee for a year or two, and then you get comfortable being an employee yeah. and then the entrepreneur mindset just goes away i mean what would you say to them like saying i can't take the risk yeah what i what my advice and by the way uh, i'm i'm only speaking to young ambitious individuals who want more from life if you're happy mm -hmm. being a doctor if you're happy being an engineer if you're happy being a lawyer or, or a pilot or a software engineer alhamdulillah fantastic keep at it be, be good at what you do and be good to your family and, and be, you know, make sure you do your five, day, your five a day, right? But if you want more from life, then you, you got to make some sacrifices somewhere. And what I would say is after uni, go into a job, but don't go with the intention to stay. Go with the intention to learn. And in the evenings and weekends, don't run around uh, running Islamic events and doing activism focus on paving your way to freedom so start on a side business and let's see where that goes it may grow to the point where you're it makes sense for you to jump full-time from job mm -hmm. it may not go anywhere which is fine you still have a full-time job so let's play it safe let's be pragmatic about it let's not do what i did which is a bit crazy which is forget forget the the corporate world forget being employed let me figure this entrepreneurship thing out it's very was it was it that I mean I guess some of the things are I think maybe you had or I, I guess actually I don't know did you have the luxury of being able to do that because some people are kind of I think you said as well that you were under a little bit of pressure from family to kind of send money back and that kind of thing and for some people I guess that's overwhelming our family uh, we're not financially comfortable we were not financially comfortable single mom just me and my brother I was at uni for five years right can you imagine no loans uh, so I didn't have any financial help. I had to work. Uh, I've been working since I was 17. I had some sort of part-time work or side hustle. Uh, actually, okay. I've been hustling a bit uh, longer than that, since, since probably secondary school. Um, so if there's anyone who should have gone into a 50K job, that, that should have been me because of that pressure. 
uh, and that expectation. And, uh, and you know, it's not easy. And, and my mom is a nurse, so she works very long hours, night shift, the whole, the whole works. Mm. Uh, it would have been easy for me to go into a 50K job and say, mom, go part time now. But what I, what I was going after was something even better than that. Mm. I want to be able to say, mom, go part time. Actually, don't need to work anymore. And now I have all the time that you need. Let's go do something. I'm not in an office stuck somewhere. Let's go do something uh, whenever you want, wherever you want. And I think that's where our mindset is a bit limited. Uh, mm -hmm. We think, yeah. you know, we don't think outside the box. If my mom calls me any day, any time, I can be with her within five minutes. Doesn't matter because I work from home. I work from home. Whereas if my brother was to get that call, uh, you know, he has to wait till he's, uh, you know, the, he's the, off the clock of the clock and then he has to yeah. travel an hour to come back from central London to where we live and then he might be able to do something there. So there's this, this benefits and now she's realizing five years on, now she's slowly realizing and now I get why you did it. She gets it now. Because the thing is, as you mentioned, for example, like uh, there's also like external pressures, family pressures especially. And um, the one kind of criticism I usually do hear from you know, people who do try and kind of create businesses, you know, parents saying, how are you working if you're on your laptop at home? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. How does it work? They, don't, they don't see you actually working on the screen. They just feel like you're sitting down in your bed. What are you doing? What are you doing? Absolutely. Which, uh, and to be fair, I mean, my, my parents, my, my dad had probably more. Uh, my, my mom still doesn't understand exactly what I do. She still doesn't, because it's difficult for them to really get their head around that, you know, I can send a few emails out. And, you know, suddenly we've raised some capital for a project. Uh, uh, and you know, it, it, it's difficult for her to get her head around it. And to be fair, they don't need to know everything as well. Because um, they, they might get stressed if they're hearing, okay, Tanim, you're taking on a, a you know, 400K project. You don't have the funding for it. You're, you're looking to raise it or whatever. Um, not that this is a, a realistic scenario. Uh, they might get stressed and worried, like, like parents do. Like at the moment, I'm refurbishing a property uh, and I'm doing it with an investor, invest, investor money. And, you know, she would freak out if you, she was hearing this type of stuff that we're doing in that property, right? So you don't always have to say everything to everyone <laughs> for their own good. Well, I, I guess the question is, how are you not freaking out, right? Like, it's, it's one of those, I guess, is it, do you think it's a mindset thing that, like if, yeah. if I'm in a corporate job, a lot of the time, um, you'll take a call that's a little bit risky, uh, but you think it's the right call, but you take it because ultimately you know that ultimately you've got the backing of whoever the business owner is. Uh, but the reality is they're the ones who are going to make the profit as well. But how are you not kind of, your brain isn't just like freaking, like you're just sitting here doing a podcast when you've got a 400K. It's a 100% mindset. And our, our mindset has been designed from a very young age to uh, don't make oh, mistakes, dress. don't take risks, follow instructions don't step out of line uh, you know <laughs> when, you, when you say our do you mean like as children of immigrants or immigrants ourselves more or do you mean like generally everyone who goes to the, the schooling system okay everyone mm -hmm. who goes to the schooling system that's what we're taught that is bad to make a mistake and in business the, the best way to learn is through mistakes mm -hmm. uh, you know we're told not uh, there's a lot of things that sub, you know subconsciously become part of our mindset and the way we see the world. And which is the reason why um, a part, you know, we run a, our flagship program is a two day program and it's all about mindset. We're reframing I mean, the mindset of young Muslims to make them uh, understand uh, and see the world, uh, world, the world, money, time, and their life a little bit differently. Well, and sorry, is that the Money Mastery program? Money Mastery, yeah. Alhamdulillah, yeah. Okay, very nice. We'll come back to that at the end and we'll put okay. some concrete links in our show notes as well so no um, the listeners can check it out if they want. I think I, what I want to do is I want to ask how, how does someone get out of that mindset that the education has put us in to, to avoid risk and to not be entrepreneur, entrepreneurial, if you want to say it like that, um, because we, we don't want to like maybe go to like these courses because we don't have access to them or we don't even know they exist. Um, and then all these motivational videos online on YouTube don't really do anything. So what would you say to like sort of Gen Z and millennials who are sort of wanting to build that mindset, but don't know where to begin? 
I, I think first and foremost, so hopefully uh, some of the work we're doing might help with that. But apart from that, you need to seek out company, uh, the right company. Because if you're surrounded by employees who uh, are quite happy doing what they're doing, or they're just resigned that this is the, uh, what my life is going to be like for the mm. next years, uh, you're going to start thinking that that's normal. But if suddenly you're surrounded by if, if, you know, a 17-year-old who's trading online or something and a 25-year-old who's got a massive uh, e-commerce business and then a 30-year-old who basically retired early because he, had, he sold his business, you're suddenly your, world is, your worldview is completely different. Suddenly you're like, well, okay, your, your, your whole paradigm is different. So company makes a massive, massive difference. So seek out company uh, of those who either have what, have what you want or at least are in the same journey as you. And that's the reason why we actually created a community uh, around, which is the business school. Uh, we can talk about that later. But again, community is important. That support is important. The mentorship is important. The coaching is important. Learning uh, is very, very important. And um, there's, there's so much content now, so much content, interviews with successful entrepreneurs. There's, uh, there's, there's, there's um, classes being broadcasted for life, uh, uh, for free everywhere. YouTube is massive. You know, I, I consume a lot of content on YouTube and it's all either mindset or some sort of pro productivity or some sort of interview, something to do with business or success or something. Uh, and that's how I am rewiring and making new connections in my brain uh, so, and learning new content. I guess the this kind of the flip side that comes to this is a lot of um, a lot of the time these YouTube adverts come up, and not just on YouTube, mm -hmm. Facebook, whatever. Yeah, they're, uh, every, they're everywhere. Yeah. Um, a lot of these I feel very much like ask. get rich quick, scammy kind of. Um, do you think that? Do you think that it? There. I mean, there is. Is there like? I, I don't know if any, any of you have a. I think one of you wanted to share a personal experience with some of these um, kind of scam ideas. Um, so, so yeah, what, what was it like for you? Oh my Lord, they are, they are beyond. So like for me, um, my first interaction with these get quick rich schemes was when I was what, like it was like four years ago now. So it's like, I think just before I started university, just after college, and you know how like on the when you're going on indeed and then you see those particular job specs that says you can earn like up to a thousand pounds a week um it's all self-taught you have the freedom to travel etc 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 like they they package it in this really cool way and they didn't even name it the way that it was actually titled so they like named it like marketing rep or like salesperson and they just sort of made it out to be a general job so there I do turn up, send my application, everything, go up for the interview. And I've literally taken her back and like as a naive, what, 18 year old, 19 year old thinking, I'm just going to stick through it. Let's let's get some money out of this. Stayed a month and I left that job in a net loss of like 900 pounds. And I was like, why the hell did I even do any of that? Because they sell you this dream and you stay because they sort of coach you and groom you to be like, and you know, this is what you're going to get if you just try step, hard and enough. Step and then the next step. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's kind of like ACN Ponzi kind of, you know, you're in. Yeah. Pay your yeah. So, so there's a lot of these things out there, and you know, all these ads that come up, all these webinars, learn how to. I watch all of them. I might learn something. Yeah. Okay. I, might learn something. I don't have to go on and do it. I might learn something. So, and I have sometimes learned something that I impl implemented somewhere else and it's benefited my business or a project. Uh, and by the way, the skills you learn in business are phenomenal for uh, organizations, DAWA work, uh, projects, youth work. The, the, these skills are very, very important. So I watch them. I watch all of them. Uh, and, and, and what usually happens, and, and most of them, to be honest with you, um, you need to make sure that whatever they teaching that others have gone through it and found mm -hmm. success because i've experienced it myself uh um, um, before i started my property business uh, i went and first i looked at all of the different strategies out there then i identified the halal ones 
Then I looked, okay, from these halal ones, which one is the one that can give me passive income in the long run? Then the next step for me was find a mentor, someone that can teach me, uh, someone who has a course. Because why would I try and do it myself when somebody can teach me it's 10 years worth of experience in two days? So we pay 1,000, 2,000 pounds, no problem, because I'm accessing that incredible information that it would take me seven years to get by myself otherwise. Now, what's interesting, 30 of us on that course, a year on, guess how many people actually have a property business that successfully have at least one or two properties? Three of us. Five. Three of us. Um, now, is, 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 the, is the course scammy or is the problem with the students? The students. So we all got the same information, same mentor, same training, same handbook, same notes, but 27 people flopped and three uh, are doing okay. Right, so who do you blame? Now, the person who flopped is gonna go around saying that was a rubbish course. But then I would go around saying that was the best investment that I've made in the last five years. So you have to be, a, you know, I understand that there's a lot of people selling scams and things like that, but that doesn't mean that everyone is scamming, everyone's out there to waste your money. I actually believe that the majority of people are providing good value. You just have to be careful. One, one rule I have, I will never purchase a course until I have met students who have done the course and are successful. Mm -hmm. and that's, and, and my... that's, that's a very, I was going to say that, is that you have a, so that's your kind of way of, you won't do the course unless someone has personally recommended it for you. A uh, person recommended it or I, ha I can see that someone else has done it and benefited. Because I already know from experience the major majority of people won't succeed. Why? It's mindset again. It's mindset. They don't have the resilience for mm -hmm. it. They don't have the enthusiasm for it. There's any small little problem, they get upset. Any small little hiccup, they, they go off track. Uh, they just don't have the persistence and the drive to stay on track. And I can see this with my eyes because we, uh, well, we coach a lot of people. And uh, a lot of these people have been on pro uh, programs. And some of these programs I've been on myself. And so what's the difference? is the mindset sometimes the experience helps mm -hmm. so uh, just going back to this whole thing yes there are some dodgy things out there and i know exactly what you're talking about because i applied for something similar which you know sold this amazing dream of having your own franchise and this and that and then when i go there it's just a sales job right but yeah. I, I did it why because uh, i i recognize that i can learn something from these people and i did it for six months mm -hmm. Uh, mashallah did very well and learned so much in that process that uh, all my businesses benefited from that and all the future businesses will do because ultimately you have to learn before you earn you got to build the man or the woman first before you build the empire and i think that's what that's what we're missing i think the education part i think when you touched about you know a mindset uh, and how important it is to even like I guess to you know how people say for example when it comes to practicing Islam you know having the right companions to help you practice Islam and making sure you're around a company of positive people likewise when it comes to business uh, and, and the mindset of business because uh, I remember like um, ever since a young age because I, I come from a family where you know my father has his business and he's always had this vision of like his whole his whole kids you know uh, taking over the business one in the future and I, when I was growing up I was very reluctant I was always rebellious and I was like no, I don't want to be part of your business because, you know, my friends are all doing this. And, uh, you know, how you mentioned, like, the whole schooling system tells you to kind of think. So, in one hand, I've got my father telling me to do his thing. And then on the other, on the other hand, I'm, I've got this kind of schooling system that's telling me, you know, go uh, fulfill your dream of becoming uh, a worker or an employee kind of thing. And I think it's... Well, I'll tell you a third thing to confuse you further. And that will be... Forget all of that and just think about what is the unique contribution that you want to make in your life. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. it. Think about that. What's the unique contribution that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, uh, you know, look at all of the things that he's given you, the contacts, your skills, your talent, your teachers, your location, your circumstances. There will be something that inshallah can, uh, will give you some in direction as to what is the unique contribution that Allah wants me to make. Uh, and it, it may not be clear for everyone, but you have to have that at the back of your mind and constantly search for that thing. 
Because uh-huh. ultimately, uh, I think that's a better way to look at it. Because, uh, but it could be you could it could be that you go into the family business and absolutely hate it, uh, and it yeah. could be that you go into uh, you know uh, employment and absolutely love it. Uh, but the, the 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 bottom line is, you know, this very short, very precious life that we have, which we don't even know how long it is. Mm-hmm. What do we want to be doing when you wake up? Yeah. I think, like, I guess, in, 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 a, in a way, it, it only, uh, only when I got to university and only when I kind of got involved with ISOC work, and I think this is one reason why I will kind of forever cherish Islamic work, oh, which wow. is, it, was, it was only because of kind of going through that process, I kind of realized, first and foremost, your ultimate purpose and ultimate fulfillment and your mm-hmm. ultimate, kind of, what you want to be doing for the sake of Allah and Ta'ala and what your contribution will be and what your legacy will be. Okay, absolutely. I think that's what kind of pushed me away from the lifestyle of, of, of kind of being an employee and uh, you know, kind of going to the corporate world or going into the kind of the 30, 40, 50k salary lifestyle and actually think about, okay, I want to work, I want to work on a few things. I want to work on you know, financial freedom so that I'm able to do what I want to do and do whatever I want, actually want to do and actually kind of create that change. But I think, uh, especially recently, uh, you know, uh, you're surrounded by a lot of friends who, you know, uh, who are nowadays working from home as well and they're all kind of talking about safety and security. Uh, especially in recent times, because a lot of people, alhamdulillah, you know, who are in top jobs, they're able to kind of say that, you know, alhamdulillah, we're, our jobs are secure and, you know, it's okay. And Biggest yeah. lie. Big. <laughs> oh, Lord. COVID-19 Big has proved lie. that. I was just going to say. Um, and just look at the statistics of how many layoffs are, uh, have happened mm-hmm. and are going to be happening very, very soon. Very soon, subhanAllah. But first, first misconception is that the job gives you security. Uh, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give you security, nothing else. Mm-hmm. So the job itself is a false sense of security because um, anything can happen in the economy. Look what happened in the pandemic. Suddenly businesses, multi-billion pound businesses are, letting, are, are shut. They're not operating. And yes, they're getting furloughed for three months. But what's going to happen after the, those three months? There's going to be job losses. Um, now, what, what's... Well, how do you get financial security? We sp- speak about this in our Money Mastery program, and that is by setting up multiple streams of income. Mm-hmm. And each one mm-hmm. should cover your l- living expense. So if you need three grand a month to live a comfortable lifestyle, what you should be focusing the day you leave uni is figure out how do I get six income streams that are going to pay me three grand each. Mm-hmm. Then you have financial security. I mean, and you say look for those six at the same time yeah. or would you say build maybe one or two and then one. over the years absolutely the the, the 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 method is build one systemize it automate it move on to the mm-hmm. next one systemize okay. it automate it, move on to the next one uh, that- and that's the reason why you know alhamdulillah i'm um, blessed to really um have this opportunity to work and channel my legacy and whatever you know may allah accept it through golden touch but I still got businesses on the side, which I'm not passionate about, but just for the side financial security element. I'm doing this bit, this property thing, and I'm trying to do this publishing thing, and a few other things. But you do one, you systemize it, automate it, free yourself up, and then move on to the next one, and then to the next one. So I yes, would rather. What you're talking about is setting up six businesses. I mean, for most people, setting up one is hard enough. And not necessarily a business, but an income stream. Okay. Now, put, uh, and that doesn't necessarily, you could join venture with someone. I know someone who basically funded uh, a friend to start a, a, I think it was a fish and chip shop uh, okay. in, in a seaside town. So that, the, the, the friend is running everything. He's a silent partner and he makes enough passive income from that to, to not need to work. The thing so, is kind of going back to like uh, the whole aspect of security for example because that, that was kind of uh, going to be that to, to my next question i think you know covid has had a massive impact on especially you know businesses uh, so the kind of so uh, you know people who you know uh, as you mentioned even multi multi million pound businesses have been hit quite badly and the thing is it might be that you know right now it's probably like the uh, correct me if i'm wrong uh, you probably might uh, think that is today right now like the worst time to actually start, start up a, a business because you know with the risk of covid and how can someone actually try and be entrepreneurial when uh, the pandemic is you know right when, here? when the entrepreneurs are struggling yeah, yeah. okay so uh, i genuinely hand on heart think this is a great time to start a business I mean, especially since the recession, 
uh, so let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. First, investors and stuff. Yeah, firstly, uh, and when I say a uh, business, uh, it doesn't mean that you need to, you know, find a shop and, uh, you know, you can, or, you, what you can just do is just start building your audience. So let's say, for example, um, I want to have my own healthy supplements, uh, um, halal, sunnah based healthy supplements, right? So this is the best time for me to do that. Why? Firstly, more people are consuming content. They're all sitting at home. A lot of people, uh, they spend less time commuting and traveling, more time on their devices consuming content. So this is the best time to be producing content. And when you produce content for your, uh, what happens is you start building your audience. Now, number one. Number two, there's less competition now. Because everybody thinks now's a bad time, Mm -hmm. Other supplement companies or other people who have an idea to do the same thing as you are not moving forward. Okay. So that, that uh, presents an opportunity. And number three, if you wanted to go all out and put someone in advertising, because no one else is spending on advertising right now, advertising is more effective and cheaper right now. Mm. So I would spend the next year, forget my product, just building an audience on healthy, organic, supplement based interest type of audience and a year from now once i've got my ten thousand or fifty thousand instagram followers that's when i would introduce i would approach an investor tell him look i've got fifty thousand people who love my content who are waiting for me to produce something for them give me 20k get that 20k get the stuff made and then you launch it and overnight you will make tens of thousands of sales because you have the audience. And the thing is, so, so say, you know, you, 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 you're talking to someone, or, or we have someone who's listening to us right now and he's start, starting to think about, okay, you know, you know what, maybe it is actually a good idea to start thinking about a business. Does it matter who I am in terms of the kind of, you know how you have like a customer profile? Let's just think about an entre- entrepreneurial profile. Does it matter in terms of how young I am? Does it matter where I live? I mean, there's someone from, I know Birmingham, mashallah, you know, they, these guys are, you know, on another level, mashallah. But uh, we are very active. It's bustling, <laughs> bustling with business activity, mashallah. So, like, um, yeah. So, does it matter? You know, uh, how young you are? Does it matter about where you live? Because you know, uh, for example, you have you know certain you know hotspots around the world that are buzzing, like you know uh, San Francisco, for example, the UAE, for example, places that are buzzing for new businesses. Um, does that matter? I personally think it doesn't matter too much. Why? Because of the internet. You could be sitting anywhere uh, and, and, and working on what you, uh, delivering your value. So the main thing you need to worry about is what value am I bringing to the market? It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter how old you are, how beautiful you are, how rich or poor you are. You just got to bring some value to the market. That's really the bottom line. And, uh, you know, business is very simple. You create value, you get paid. You want to be a millionaire, create a million pounds worth of value. Help a million people. You'll become a millionaire as a byproduct of that. So again, these are... Cons- how do you determine value? Uh, value could be anything that benefits someone, helps someone, or solves a problem. So anything that solves a problem. Uh, benefit, and, and this is why I think it's, uh, business is in, in, intrinsically Islamic. Because business basically means either benefiting people, providing a service or a product, or solving a problem. Both things are part and parcel of our Islamic ethos of the best of you are those who benefit others. So for me, business is the best thing you could be doing apart from worship, (laughs) you know, because business can become direct worship. And you know, like, you know, we, 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 we often tell people that, mashallah, you're working, you're providing for your family, mashallah, you get reward for that. Now imagine if you're providing for your family by doing something that benefits others. That's double reward, mm-hmm. right? So if my, in my short life, I want to maximize my purpose. I want to maximize uh, every opportunity and you know really try my best to get that pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think you had a you had a seminar like a couple months ago at the start of lockdown where you actually went through a hundred business ideas mm, that COVID is providing an opportunity for. So what kind of things did you come up with in terms of sectors that actually we can capitalize on and that maybe are going to be rising? 
that was very interesting because it was the first time I did something like that. Uh, and it was literally a live brainstorming session with anyone who wanted to join, right? Yeah. And the, the, the first thing we did is list out every single problem, new problem that people are facing because of COVID. So children are at home. Uh, mm. we, 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 the groceries are an issue. Uh, restaurants are closed. Uh, I've lost my job. Uh, I'm on furlough. Uh, can't travel, I'm stuck somewhere. So we listed, I think, 55 different problems. Now, if you can find a solution for any one of those problems, you have a business on your hands. So let me give you an example. Kids are at home, stagnating, playing PlayStation, falling behind on their ed education. This is a great opportunity. If you're a teacher, this is a fantastic opportunity to start helping parents uh, to keep the children engaged and learning in a way that the children are bored as well. So we actually mm -hmm. took action on this. And as Golden Touch Academy, we started a completely new project uh, aimed at teenagers. And we basically were delivering free web classes every other day for teenagers based on uh, life mastery. So personal development, Islam, uh, productivity, uh, personal skills. Why did we do that? Uh, for free, because it allowed us to build an audience. So within, within two weeks, we had 300 children from all over the world what, you know, signed up. And then if you wanted to, we can switch that to a paid program. Yes, we've done two months for free. If you want to carry on, it's paid. And there you go. You suddenly now have 1,500, 2,000 pounds a month worth of revenue in the middle of lockdown. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're solving a problem for someone. Parents were desperate to find a way to keep the children engaged and, and not just academically, uh, but also learning these, uh, you know, valuable new skills that because uh, everybody is in that mode of improving themselves in lockdown. Right. So that was one example. Other examples. This is a real example of a brother who's in the business school. Right. GCC and A-level students, their exam have been cancelled. So they haven't, they probably won't revise in the same way that they yeah. would have otherwise. They, and when they go to a GCC students, when they go to A level, the jump is going to be twice as hard for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a perfect opportunity. And a lot of students know this and are worried. This is the perfect opportunity for a math teacher to be like, hey, let me design a course to help you bridge that gap. Because this year is going to be the hardest for math students going into A level. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's what he's working on. He's going to do 10 sessions for free to build the audience. And then he's going to offer a paid program for us. Uh, and that's a full-time working teacher who can do this on the side. And once he's done once, he can run it every year. And mm -hmm. that's where the passive income element comes in. So do you see how every business idea is linked to a particular problem? Um, so I really like that. Now, let's start talking about some of the personal finance element of it, right? So yes, you can do a side hustle. Um, but one of the things is uh, some of the things that your job gives you things like, for example, a pension, and kind of, you know, you follow that very reasonable, very smooth trajectory that everyone kind of expect, expects you to do, you get your job, um, you, get, you keep your pension plan, you maximize it, whatever, uh, you're being financially responsible, you buy a house. So now you have a mortgage to pay, then you get married. Uh, and then you have a kid and now you've got all these things. So now you're, you feel like, and again, this, I guess maybe you'll talk about it from a mindset perspective, but on a very real level, you feel like I can't give up this job because it's income coming in and I need to have that. But also you're in this weird position where your income's coming in and the minute it comes in, it's gone. And that's the, 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 the very difficult situation. 90% uh, of people are in, unfortunately, well, 95% because the entrepreneurs is very small. It's a growing group, alhamdulillah. So, uh, and this is why actually, any, anyone young look, uh, you know, listening to this or watching this, the, you know, if you're a student, you're in a golden window of opportunity. You don't have any responsibilities. You may not be paying rent from your own pocket. You may not have a, a spouse. You may not have a child. This is the time for you to set something up and work towards something. For, and, and that's basically the advice that I received which is why I took the gap here, because I realized the minute I get the job, next thing is my mom's going to try and get me married. Then obviously that's a big expense and responsibility. Then probably going to try uh, and we're going to try and get it on the property ladder. Blah, blah, blah. And before you know it, yeah. if you're not earning two, three thousand pounds a month, you're stuck. 
which makes it harder for you to come out the system. It's called the golden handcuffs. The more money they give you, the more uh, tied up you are in that system because it becomes difficult to earn 5,000 from a business, uh, for example, regularly, if you're doing it on the side. But if my expenses are only 500 pounds a month, or a thousand pounds a month, I can afford to give up the job and focus on this and then grow it. But one thing also we have to remember, your risk is predetermined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's something that I understood at uni, that whether I work for Islamic Relief or an investment bank, what's due for mm -hmm. me will come. I will not die until every single last grain has reached me. And the risk comes in many different forms, many different forms. At one time I was working this job I was earning 800 pounds a month. And this was with, it's not a charity, but it was like a charity mission type of thing. Um, a very low salary, fulfillment on a different level. You know, mashallah, it was basically ISOC work all over again, but on a professional mm -hmm. level. And I'm getting this 800 pounds, which is barely nothing, but we're getting invited to deliver a program in Malaysia. We're getting invited to get, deliver something in Turkey. We go into Portugal, all expenses paid. So this is also part of your risk. It's travel. I'm not paying for it. Someone else is, but this is part of your risk. So your bank balance, your salary, sometimes is, is not the only indication of the quality of life that you will experience. Um, I read a stat recently. Uh, I think it was uh, MIT Sloan Business School who talked about the average age of an entrepreneur is actually 42, wow. um, which, which I found very interesting because I was like, I thought, all entrepreneurs were like young guys. Young. Like... I, think, I think that there's a massive, uh, obviously, uh, interest in entrepreneurship now and more. We have 16-year-olds in our business school, can you believe it? And these guys are sharp. He sent me a document with 32 business ideas and he analyzed every single one. Sharp, subhanAllah. There's a 15-year-old uh, who took him on as an intern. He emailed me. He was 15 years old and he emailed me saying, I want financial freedom. I don't want to be stuck in the system. Can you help me? He hasn't even signed his GCC exams. SubhanAllah. So yes, he's going to be younger and younger and younger. But traditionally, most business owners, if you line them all up in the UK, they're going to be middle to, you know, middle age plus probably. Middle age plus. And Why do you think that is? Um... Probably because in the last 20, 30 years, there's been such an emphasis on education. Mm -hmm. Probably because of that. And interestingly, uh, and we, we teach this in the Money Mastery Program as well, which 95%, sorry, 5% of people are entrepreneurs and they're the ones that own 90% of the wealth. What does that mean? How is that possible? Uh, and are we missing a trick? You know, if we are talented enough to, mashallah, go to a good uni, get a good degree, get a good job. Imagine if we channel that talent into uh, trade and business with someone's mentorship. Don't do it by yourself. It's mm -hmm. going to take you 10 times longer and it's going to be 10 times more expensive. Find a mentor. I recently joined a program, a productivity program with a 21 year old. So he's a high performance coach. He's only 21, but I'm, I'm willing to learn from him. Why? Because he's got five mentors and he's been with them for like six years and they're all multimillionaires and he is on a different level. He's running four businesses, waking up at 4 a.m. every day, working out, making time for church, making time for um, his family. And I want to learn from him. I want to learn from mm -hmm. him. No problem. So uh, age is no longer a factor anymore. But your learning is who you're learning from and how much you're learning. You mentioned an interesting thing about sleep. Right, and uh, Sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say, where do you find those mentors? I mean, um, I'm looking for one as well. Yeah, I, you can have YouTube, but there's no, nothing no, like this was, interaction. Was yeah, you know, I was following his YouTube channel for uh, some time. Okay. Uh, and then he, 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 and then obviously they sometimes have a program, a coaching program or a website or something. And I must have attended a webinar. And next thing I know, I paid $500 for that. <laughs> But in terms of where to find mentors, I get this question all the time, uh, subhanAllah, which is why part of the business school is that we have all of the mentors under one roof. If you want to do e-commerce, we've got someone for e-commerce. And when I say someone, I mean a Muslim, conscious Muslim entrepreneur who's an expert in that field and he's happy and willing to teach the rest of us.
So I'm to that, 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 that scares a lot of people. Like a lot of Muslims are like, um, well, actually, forex is very difficult to go into. Drop shipping very difficult to go into. Yeah. So all these things, and you're just like, oh my god, Sharia, Sharia. You know what? I'm going to leave this and stick to my. It's very overwhelming, which is why I think uh, it, someone uh, someone needs to simplify these things. And uh, one of our latest YouTube videos uh, on our channel was literally online halal income simplified. The only thing you need to be able to make an uh, income from a laptop, just one thing, forget everything else. That was the core message. And that one thing, you gotta watch the video. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. The one thing, <laughs> That one is, that's that's your quote, sales pitch. The one thing is having an audience. Uh, and there's this quote that I read in the newspaper once that someone said that having an a audience on social media is more valuable than a Cambridge degree. I was blown away by that. And if you think about it, it's true because, you know, if you have a healthy social media following and you're able to monetize that, you then go and do whatever you want to do with your life. And there's, uh, some of you may have seen my recent post on LinkedIn that this YouTuber that I like following, uh, he travels the world just to eat. Yes. Travels yeah. the world just to eat and he, and he just takes a camera with him. He documents everything and he's got 6.5 million subscribers, billions of views, which basically means he's on a healthy seven-figure income per year. Doing what? Eating. In and he's not the only one. There's a lot of them. Yeah. And so how, how do these people get in these positions? Like, you know, I so like really, to travel. I like to eat. Absolutely. So what well, you have to, well, uh, I don't want to make it sound easy. It's very difficult. Why? Try making a video every week of your life. That's not easy. Yeah. Recording it, the idea, the concept, the editing is hard work. But it still allows him, you know, they're still working. I mean, if you wanted to, you, you could outsource it. So some of these guys actually have a whole team with them now. The, the, somebody will follow them with a the camera. Someone else will do the editing. Someone else will do this. So they just basically are the protagonist. Uh, but it's hard work. It's dedication, consistency. Our YouTube channel is not growing as much because I'm not consistent with it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not building that discipline. Discipline, consistency, right? So it still work, but they enjoy doing that whereas and they probably enjoy it a little bit more than uh, you know their previous jobs and some of these guys you know had other jobs and then decided to do something different and took a risk took a risk and nine years on it's it paid off big time it paid off big time when i look at them i'm like okay and when i look at some of uh, men, people that i've met who are financially free I'm like, Mus you know, as Muslims, we should have the life that you have, which basically means I have no worry about mm -hmm. money. Any project I want to do, I can put money towards. Any anywhere I want to go in the world to visit, contribute and help, I can go. Um, I have plenty of time and money and resources to donate and put to you good use. Why don't we have that? We need more of that. So, mm -hmm. and, and the key mm -hmm. is entrepreneurship. Yeah. The thing is, you know, we've talked about various different concepts when it comes to entrepreneurship. You know, we've, we've talked about mindset, for example. We've talked about habits. We've talked about hard work. I want to ask you yourself and even this kind of general advice to uh, others as well. How has entrepreneurship in generally, you know, generally, how, how has it changed you as a person? Because uh, you, you also mentioned, for example, how business is also Islamic as well. But how has it, for example, made you a better Muslim, a better, you know, and, and, and just a better person as a, as a, you know, in terms of your habits? And... Uh, is this something which is intended by business and is this something that you'd also kind of recommend that, you know, it should be changing you, you know, things like the habit of your, your, your sleeping pattern to productivity and stuff. It is, uh, the truth is, uh, it is what you make of it. So imagine suddenly, you know, you go from having to work in an office to suddenly you set your own schedule. So if I want to, tomorrow I could sleep till 12, no problem. But to get stuff done and to keep the projects going and to help more people, it's probably a good idea if I wake up a bit earlier than that. And so you have to be more self-motivated. You have to be more self-disciplined because there's nobody looking over your shoulder. There's nobody checking what time you're clocking in. There's, no, there's none of that. So there's two dangers here uh, with not having that routine and that oversight. One danger is that 
you become completely lazy and completely out of sync and you're basically working at 3 a.m. and then sleeping in the afternoon and just completely mess up your routine, which has happened. Or the other thing is that you're working and, and, and then you're basically struggling. You're not doing enough work because your routine is bad, your productivity is bad and uh, you know, you're in your room, uh, there's no colleagues. If you want to watch Netflix, you can, no one's gonna say nothing. So your, your basically productivity and output is very low. The other danger, and I've seen this happen and I think I'm in that camp potentially, is that because the, the business means so much to you and the mission means so much to you and because you enjoy it so much that you just work yourself to the bone. And, you know, before this podcast, uh, I've had a very long day, a lot of calls, a lot of, I was really tired and I'm like, man, I'm going to need some coffee, uh, but I'm not drinking coffee because my productivity coach said not to drink coffee after five o'clock. Yeah. But now that we're speaking, my energy level is right up here and I could mm. speak with you for the next five hours, no problem, right? But so again, it's like, it's like 9 p.m. Right. right now. So you've been working all day um, and then, you know, we're going to take this to what, like Maghrib time or something. Yeah. So how do you balance that with like family time? And kind of that's the point of a lot of people look at exactly. entrepreneurship it's as, you know, I'm never going to work. I'm just going to be. Mm-hmm. This is the danger where, like, this is why I call it a problem and a danger that you can end up, you can end up working too much. Uh, if you're not careful. So this is why I recognize this as a problem and I now have a productivity coach. So we're completely redesigning my schedule. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm having, and I'm probably going to stop working around four o'clock from now on. Because really and truly, I don't really need to work more than five hours a day on my laptop. Really and truly. What happens is, oh, you procrastinate a little bit or you start answering emails that don't need to be answered and then you start responding to messages that don't need to be responded. So there's a lot of inefficiencies in the day, but the key message I have uh, uh, and we, in, and when I say we is myself and my mentor, Ustad Usman, who is the co-founder of Golden Touch, is business is not the be all and end all, it's just a facilitator for what? Number one, more impact more mission, legacy type of life. Number two, more flexibility. So our motto is freedom and flexibility for the more important things in life. So if business is taking over and I've been in that position, I've worked 18 hours a day, seven days a week in a business. In the early days, I've done it. Two years ago, I slept in a tuition center for two nights because there was just so much going on. And I've seen friends of mine, mentors of mine, completely burn out and end up in hospital because they're just mm. so on it and they're not thinking about their f- f- uh, f- uh, fitness, their health, um, and the children sometimes. So we need a more balanced narrative around entrepreneurship. And um, that's what I'm hoping that we can provide for mus- our Muslim community, which is why I think there needs to be a separate uh, place for discussing entrepreneurship for Muslims. Because for us, our prayers are important, our family, uh, you know, we have responsibilities and duties to, towards many things and many people. We can't fall short on those for the sake of business. Doesn't matter how noble your business is and how, how much charity you plan to give, you can't compromise on your prayers, your family, your parents, your children, your spouses, your siblings, your body, your health. Yeah, because they all have rights over you. Absolutely. So, you know, we're very big on balance. And, and again, in the Money Mastery, we speak about this. We get everybody to do a wheel of life exercise where we basically score every important area of your life. Relationships, finances, health, business, um, um, your husband and wife relationship. And then you score yourself to see where do we need to do a little bit of work on to bring a better balance? So very important question. And uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm working on that myself. Uh, I went f- I, from one extreme to the other. When my son was born in November, I took two months off work, did nothing, nothing. And, some, and a normal uh, paternity leave for an employee is two weeks. I was off for nine weeks. And then I was struggling to get back into the routine of things. Then I got a coach and now I'm on the other end where I'm business is really mashallah, going somewhere. I'm really enjoying it. There's so much to do, so much I want to do that I'm just doing a bit too much. 
uh, mm. and not thinking about myself. So now I'm in a much better routine. Thank how you does, my, how my, does this affect different um, kind of, so there's a big kind of, a, I guess maybe in your experience at Golden Touch, like how, what sort of, how many men and women do you see? But also do you think generally out there in the entrepreneurial world, um, a lot of the examples we hear a lot of the time, they seem to be uh, guys. And a lot of the time, actually, I listened to this podcast called How I Built This, where they bring on a lot of um, kind of uh, entrepreneurs who've built something that, uh, that we recognize. Um, and, uh, and one of the things they always like, uh, business seem to break up marriages, although to be fair, maybe jobs do that as well. Um, uh, but also, um, like it, it seems to be a lot more guys. Do you think there's something specific? Do you think it's, it's something specific in our culture? Uh, or, or do you think it's actually like global and it's not just, uh, happening to Asians and, and I Arabs? Think, and yeah, I think that's pretty much across the, across the, the spectrum. If you just go and do a quick search now, top 100 entrepreneurs or f- f- four, I, I think there's like four or five, four or six who are yeah. women. That's it. There's a similar thing with CEOs, a uh, similar thing with senior directors in the city. There's always this imbalance, gender imbalance. Mm which there's so many you know, explanations or reasons for, uh, but it's certainly something uh, we need to do more work on as a community because our sisters and mothers more than anyone else could do with a bit of financial freedom. Mm-hmm. Imagine if they didn't need to worry about working, they didn't need to worry about bills, they didn't need to worry about what happens if something, God forbid, happens to my husband. I think, and this is a second video we ever produced on YouTube was a message directly to sisters that please plan for your own personal financial future. Don't spend 20 grand on a wedding, invest that money and build some assets and some incomes for yourself. So then, you know, when, when you, if you want to take time off to be with your child, you can, there's no, no one, there's no compulsion or need to go back to work. If something, God forbid, happens to your husband, you're not going to be stuck. If, uh, and money, by the way, is a big um, problem in relationships. That money dynamic, especially when one partner has control over the money or brings in the money. And it's almost like uh, it, the, the other, you can leverage it against the other partner. So yeah. it, mm-hmm. I mean, it's really, a leading I cause think, of divorce, right? Money matters, financial problems. Absolutely, absolutely. And I've seen that in my own uh, parents' life. Money was the biggest thing that, you know, uh, used to cause issues and in, 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 you know, it led to, uh, you know, 20 years, 20 something years of arguments and eventually in divorce. So I know- I mean, you mentioned how women, Mm -hmm. I was just gonna say, you mentioned how women don't have, well, should sort of uh, be encouraged to make their own financial uh, streams of income. But the thing is though, how many, like, how can they develop that financial literacy if they don't have it? already because it's easy to start a business and everything but you can fall into the trap of failing in it without the correct mental and also without the proper financial education absolutely which is why you know for us the bulk of our work is education hence we're called an academy Uh, and it's called the business school and the golden touch academy because it's all about education and we're trying our best and you know it would be good to get more people involved and i'm partnering up with different uh, people in this space. So at the moment, we're doing a joint program with uh, a student of knowledge to deliver a specific course for students of knowledge who want to learn how to make an income so that they can then go and study and not have to worry about funding and money and expenses. So the next project for me is to find a successful entrepreneur sister, Muslim sister, family woman, and I know quite a few of those, alhamdulillah, we're already building relationships with them, to then let's design a program that our sisters can go through to get the, 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 you know, the foundational mindsets and understanding about business. And then after that, mm-hmm. they can be supported through our business school, our community, they can be supported uh, in that whole journey. Uh, and that's then that's kind of the way we're trying to do is to be able to provide that education and knowledge and acumen and sort of almost a re-education process and for me that re-education process took three years and i intentionally spent three years working in other people's businesses sometimes for very little sometimes for nothing just to re-educate myself 
and to invest in myself and build them person before you build the empire. So it doesn't need to take that long and it doesn't need to be that expensive. So I'm trying to basically, you know, make it as convenient as possible to gain that knowledge and uh, that can be helpful. Of course, I can't guarantee somebody will be successful, but it, it'll, it'll be very helpful, inshallah. When you're talking about a mindset recalibration, do you recommend that, for example, someone's already married, that they come together to the course as a couple? Or do you think it's a... Because I, I guess this could cause, like, if, if, one, if one's party uh, in a relationship is, is on this, you know, money mastery hype, and they're like, you know what, I'm going to quit my job and take a risk and go for entrepreneurship because I see this larger goal, and the other side just don't see it because they're in the, I want a job and a pension and a kind of... Totally. So we have a special discount for couples because you have to have the same transformation together. Otherwise, it can cause big problems. And, and by the way, we never say start a business and then quit your job. Mm. We say stay in your job, start something on the side, something that's in line with your long term goal, passion, strengths, whatever. We have four different levels of how you actually find a business uh, idea. Stay in your job, start something on the side, grow it slowly, slowly, and eventually there will be a tipping point. Even then, I would say don't quit your job. I would say keep saving, saving, saving. Whatever money comes from the business, save, 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 save. Build a massive uh, you know, emergency fund, rainy day fund. Now you're in a position to quit. Why? You've got a massive uh, emergency fund and your business is generating enough, uh, maybe more than your business, uh, than your job. Now you're in a position to quit. So let's play it. Let's be pragmatic and, uh, and responsible about this. Let's not just be like, okay, I've had enough. Here's my resignation. Off I go. See you later. Yeah. I think, uh, as you mentioned, by the way, uh, uh, moments ago, we could actually literally talk about this for like five hours straight. And... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and definitely, I think uh, yourself, is, you know, as, as an individual, you know, we can kind of benefit from uh, for a lot more and, I think uh, one thing you mentioned about legacy as well is that, you know, sometimes you don't even see it. And uh, I think likewise with yourself specifically, it may also have reward you because I'm sure that you've, in, you've inspired a lot of people that you don't even know that you've, you know, people who haven't even enrolled to any of your courses that have just heard about you and your, and your work that are getting inspired and so on. So I think uh, you know, uh, definitely there's, there's a huge point about legacy and, uh, and, and whatnot. I think just the one final point to kind of talk about before we start wrapping up, um, which is, you know, what do I do now as a, as a person who's you know, listening to this? Uh, you, we mentioned some very good points about, you know, kind of monetizing your hobbies, for example, or, uh, you know, have a, having a, a following. And you mentioned that it's better to have, you know, uh, X number of followers than to have a Cambridge degree. Uh, and, and that is really what even a lot of people start thinking about, you know, uh, oh, I don't have any money for investment in the first place. So what do I do? How can I actually make that step? How can I actually... Uh, go on about uh, doing it all you know what do I start up a business in so what you know what would be the next steps from listening to this kind of uh, so, up to your courses as well yeah now of course it goes without saying that you know if you're serious about this stuff then you know come and join the community uh, and you know or go look for a community or a mentor that can help you uh, so you have to take some steps you have to take some pro you know you have to be proactive now when it comes to business, and, and this has been a journey for myself, I used to think it doesn't matter about passion and all this stuff. If something works, just do it, get your money, and then build the next one. But um, as my own journey uh, you know, is unfolding and I'm growing myself, I'm realizing the importance of passion in business. Uh, it's so key. And if you can um, you know, blend passion with the talent that you have, and by the way, we all have a gift. If you, do, if you think you don't, then maybe you haven't discovered it yet, but Allah has given all of us a very unique gift. So when you can merge the two, that's when the magic happens and that's where your business opportunity is. Mm. And today we live in a world where you don't necessarily need to sell anything to anyone to make a living. Because you know, if you have a million YouTube subscribers, you don't need to sell them anything. YouTube is paying you for the ads, right? So the key is, what can I, you know, what is my micro niche? What is my contribution? What is my unique value add, right? So when I did that exercise of passion overlapping with my skills or talents or strengths, 
the overlap was business, become something that I absolutely love and something that I'm passionate about. The thing, there's uh, the Muslim was in the middle there because those are the people that I love <laughs> and I like to help. And the other thing in there was uh, support and coaching. So guess what I'm doing now for the rest of, oh, inshallah, for whatever, however long I have left, this is what I'm focusing on. Business, Muslim, coaching, help. And I'll be quite frank with you, um, this could very easily be a multi-million pound business. Very easily, because you know, it, it doesn't, it, how many billion Muslims are on the planet? Let's just say, all you need, by the way, is a thousand customers that love everything that you do. If a thousand customers, you know, are, are, are paying you 50 pounds a month, do the maths. That's 50 grand a month, right? And I don't think it's gonna be difficult for me to find 50, uh, uh, sorry, a thousand young Muslim professionals across the globe who are interested in learning more about business. Mm -hmm. So imagine, you know, you can apply this model to anything. You know, if you're passionate about uh, empowering uh, a particular gender, particular age group. If you're passionate about one, uh, one brother's doing uh, his business concept is teaching people how to be self-sufficient in terms of growing your own produce. I thought that's a brilliant idea. I'll be his first customer because I definitely, this lockdown is one of the things I was thinking about. He's very passionate about it. He's doing it. And, you know, uh, I can see him doing very well on an Instagram page where, you know, he's documenting his journey. People are watching. And next thing you know, he can start selling some seeds. He can start selling a program to teach you the basics of it. He can sell an ebook. He can sell coaching if somebody wants to do one on one coaching with him. He can do a retreat abroad, a charge. Uh, so there's so much opportunity. SubhanAllah, it's really unreal. And that's where I hope more people can have the courage to really seize the opportunity that the, the time we live in right now, absolutely phenomenal. You know, you can reach, we have more computing power. On our, in, in our hands than, you know, presidents of massive nations had 20 years ago, 30 years ago. We have more power, more computing power in our hands. You know, I can reach a million people from this device, million people within 10 minutes. That is un, unprecedented, really unthinkable, the times we live in. So how can we sell a, a year of our life for 50,000 pounds? To me, it doesn't make sense. That's fine. Sure. And uh, is there is there anything that you'd kind of recommend as well, uh, to, you know, to our, to our listeners, both in terms of uh, books, for example, that you've stumbled across, or even uh, your some of the, your uh, your program as well? Uh, I'm I'm really big on reading and self development, so inshallah we cover a lot of those things. This is what I'm reading right now. You th you probably think I'm bluffing, but this is what I'm reading right now. <laughs> it's literally right here. So marketing. Very nice. Seth Godin. Amazing. So a story worthy. Oh, Seth, I want to read Seth Godin's one. Very nice. Very, very good. This is marketing. So these are things that basically, not only am I reading, but I'm studying them and then teaching them in the business school. So, so uh, the idea is that, you know, you don't have to go through and spend five hours reading a book to really get the juice of it. And the idea is that I'm able to, you know, share that in an hour with thousands and thousands of people. Uh, right there and there. So number one, read. Uh, inshallah, you, people, whoever's listening who wants some uh, recommendations, feel free to drop me a, a message on our website or on LinkedIn or whatever. I have a specific list based on what it is that you're looking for. Uh, definitely read Reach That Poor Dad. Definitely read uh, was, uh, da, 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 the few really good ones that I, um, how to influence people, uh, how to win friends and influence people. That was uh, life changing for me. I read that when I was ISOC president and it was a game changer, subhanAllah. Uh, as young leaders, you also want to read this book. Where is it? Uh, I like this book. Ah, uh, that's me. 11 leadership yeah. that changed the world. So I, I spent three years with him building, the, you know, teaching this stuff around the world and building the business. And, you know, Allah took him back early. So, you know, he passed away a year ago. But Alhamdulillah, his legacy is still with us. And this, the knowledge in this book is what allowed me to literally take our ISOC from something no one heard of in campus to becoming the number one ISOC society, award-winning society on campus where other people would come to us for advice and help 
and support during campaigns and all that sort of stuff. So th th this was it. And it sold directly from the best man to have ever walked this earth, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So these few books, I think your audience will benefit from. They're not, um, they're not particularly business related, but um, they will start changing that in their, minds, their mindset, inshallah. I think this has been, well, uh, almost, uh, you know, a uh, whole uh, thing to take in. But, uh, Inshallah, that's a lot. Imagine yeah. spending a few days with us. That you, you're going to be fried by the end of it. <laughs> you're going to be done. So, this, this, this episode itself has definitely been a, a very good advert for that and something I'll definitely uh, consider. And I think, Thaqib, what, about, what, what do you think about, uh, you know, offering a, a premium rate for uh, middle, the Middle West podcast? Do you know, I mean... Off? Yes, this is one of the things from our perspective. I think I think maybe we need a special session with you on uh, on on how we're doing uh, generally. Like, I think in our lives, but also as a podcast project. I would love because you know you you are the people that have that potential to go on and do some incredible stuff. And if I can play a small role in maybe putting you on that path or giving a bit more clarity or ca being a catalyst, that would be one of the you know greatest achievements that I can hope for, right? So I'm more than happy. I have all the time in the world for people like yourselves who are doing good things, Fisabilillah. And inshallah, keep creating content, inshallah. And also study what other podcasts are doing, other successful podcasts. What are they doing that gets them uh, that growth? Because ultimately you want thousands of people to listen to your podcast, right? So we need to learn how we get that out there, inshallah. Khair. And you will, inshallah, you will. To all of our listeners and viewers, um, you know, this is the reason why this is the last ever free episode. Next few episodes will now forever be on subscription. <laughs> that's it. That's it. No, no, don't worry. We're, not, we're not monetizing yet. It's fine. <laughs> don't panic. <laughs> but, yeah, no uh, but yeah, once again, Jazakallah Khair. I think, uh, as you mentioned earlier on as well, uh, uh, you know, uh, prayer comes first with everything. Uh, we actually, you know, some of you guys do actually need to go pay Maghrib. For me, Maghrib is at the moment, you know, about an hour away because I am currently in Scotland. So. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. But yeah, originally from Tower Hamlets, just like yourself. So. Oh, I, I live in Ilford at the moment. Oh, astaghfirullah, you may. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've never been in Tower Hamlets, but I do love Tower Hamlets. I had an amazing time in Tower Hamlets. Uh, one of my early businesses, two early businesses were in Tower Hamlets. So I'm very uh, close to the community there, mashallah. This is why London's the best city in the world. But anywho, uh, <laughs> so with that, we'll kind of wrap up, uh, inshallah. Just welcome here once again uh, for coming on. Uh, and to all of our listeners and viewers, I think, uh, you know, uh, feel free to listen to us on Spotify, on iTunes, on literally everything. We're on YouTube. We're, you know, uh, we're on Instagram. So please do follow us on Instagram. We're on uh, Twitter at the, uh, the Middle West PC. Uh, and yeah, uh, also do feel free to uh, drop us email. Uh, at podcast at the middlewest.co.uk if you have any suggestions uh, we do actually do uh, you know listen to your comments and do this, uh, read your, your, your emails so we don't, we don't we don't just say that for the sake of it you know mashallah we do actually listen and we do try our best to you know implement some of your feedback uh, so yeah jazakallah khair for listening and uh, assalamu alaikum stay blessed jazakallah khair assalamu alaikum